Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm here to share my experiences uh, with securing and optimizing enterprise networks using uh, free software and liberated hardware. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I run a business called Unmukti Technology. Uh, it's a pure, uh, purely free software business where we uh, build network equipment uh, using free software and liberated hardware and we brand them as Hobbox. Uh, these are a few of my uh, affiliations. Uh, as of now, I'm OpenWRT contributor and assistant GNUSINS at GNU project. Uh, right, so let's start. Uh, what do we mean by enterprise here? So we, my experience is uh, purely with uh, small and medium enterprises uh, who have geographically uh, dispersed locations and the number of users have been uh, between 10 to 150 uh, and the free software uh, that uh, we use uh, is bundled under OpenWRT which is a Linux distribution for networking equipment embedded or otherwise uh, and the liberated hardware are the off-the-shelf hardware that let us run the free software or operating system that we want to run on those devices. So uh, the requirements that we uh, received from the prospects were primarily related to multiple internet link for resiliency. They wanted to connect all their uh, dispersed location using VPNs. Uh, they also wanted to optimize the utilization of bandwidth so that their business critical applications do not suffer if uh, some user, say, starts watching videos or downloading torrents. They, in fact, wanted to want to block uh, P2P traffic. Web access control, every enterprise requires that. And almost all of them uh, faced issues with wireless networks. So uh, this is a typical uh, SME network which has multiple locations look like. So they uh, they have head office, they have branch offices, they have warehouses. Uh, then uh, a lot of our customers are retailers. So they have their stores in tier two, tier three, tier four towns across India. Uh, then they'll have field executives uh, and merchandisers who will go and do buying uh, for, the, for, for, for their company so that uh, those stuff can be put in the stores. Uh, so uh, we use decided to use OpenWRT, and the hardware stack is more important because uh, it is very difficult to find uh, off-the-shelf hardware that can run uh, free software. So we narrowed down to uh, these devices. They are in increasing. Uh, uh, the top one has lowest uh, system configuration, so that has a 600 megahertz CPU. Uh, 128, 256 MB of RAM and just 128 megabytes of storage. Uh, and the largest one, the bottom one, has Xeon CPU with 8 cores and 8 GB of RAM. It is expandable. Uh, the golden one, it, it has quad-core uh, MIPS CPU and 512 MB of RAM and 64 MB of storage. Now, uh, storage might sound less, but if you build an operating system or firmware uh, which has to do predefined tasks, you can uh, cram a lot of stuff uh, in that minuscule space, and OpenWRT uh, does that. Right, so the first requirement of uh, connectivity, multiple internet links. So there is a package in OpenWRT which is called MVAN3, that uh, that uh, that can do load balancing, that can do failover, uh, that can also do uh, persistent uh, per sending pers traffic persistently. For example, you want your uh, one business application to go through only one link, while all other applications should go through the other link. So radio links are the only option in uh, remote locations. Uh, so, 
most of the places are in northeast or hilly areas or interiors where no copper or fiber internet is available. And the warehouses, they are also situated uh, in outskirts of the city where you only get radio links. And the problem with radio links is if you lose line of sight with the base transmitter station, you will experience packet loss and high latency. So you can see that visualization, there is 20%, more than 20% of packet loss and latency is also uh, is valuable. Latency doesn't hurt, hurt much, but a 10% packet loss can bring your TCP application to a grinding halt. So uh, this, uh, this one customer, they had a very big warehouse uh, in Gurgaon. Uh, they had two radio links. They, 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 spent, uh, they spent a good amount of money in uh, ensuring that they have resilient connectivity. But then every two or three days, uh, we used to get complaints that, OK, all the links are experiencing packet loss. Now, if when both the links are connected to our device, uh, that device comes under suspicion, right? So we try to identify the root cause of the problem, and it turned out to be this guy. I mean, their family members are so they used to come, they climb the tower and shake the antennas, they lose line of sight. So how would you solve this problem? So the problem was solved by this guy. So they hired a langur, <laughs> and that langur is still there. He sits at the base of the tower to scare away the monkeys. So, <laughs> so yeah. But you cannot uh, put langur everywhere. So we had to. Uh, so M N three package. Uh, M N three could only monitor links with ping. It couldn't take into consideration the packet loss or latency. So we uh, customized the package where uh, two watermarks are there, one upper watermark and a lower watermark. So if either latency or, or packet loss goes beyond a certain threshold, it considers that link as down. And if it comes uh, below the lower watermark, it, it again brings that link up. So we made that change and then we contributed back to the OpenWRT project. Now let's come to traffic prioritization. Uh, it's generally called quality of service. So there's again a package available with OpenWRT uh, where you can uh, classify your traffic in f uh, under four priorities, express, normal, uh, bulk, and priority. So uh, now when everything is uh, getting web-based and encrypted, we need something to uh, identify what traffic is, uh, is, is related to what kind of application. So for that, there is a library called libNDPI, which does deep packet inspection. Uh, that can be used. We are not using that as yet. But yes, that will be used to identify and classify the traffic and then assign them to the uh, corresponding queues for priority. Uh, now, let's come to the um, connecting all their locations. So OpenVPN is a very mature uh, VPN uh, software available, and it's very simple. So if you, uh, I mean, it's simple in the sense that you do not have to configure a lot of things on the client. You can push the configuration from the server. So we still depend on OpenVPN. And uh, this, these stats are quite old, but the largest network that uh, we support as of now has more than 400 locations. Now, when with OpenVPN came another problem, they wanted sub-second failover between the VPN tunnels. So there are two links at this side, two links at this side, and there are two VPN tunnels, which are both are active. But if one link fails, they wanted it to shift to another link within a second. So for that, we have to use an integer gateway routing, integer gateway protocol. So we used OSPF in addition to BFD. Uh, BFD helps uh, detect link failure within milliseconds. Uh, it's bidirectional flow detection. And the software that we use is called BIRD. 
Bird is very capable software. A lot of uh, internet exchanges are running Bird for BGP root propagation. Okay, now uh, after sub second failover, you have two links, you have two tunnels. One of the link goes down and the other link goes bad. So there's no third link to fall back on and your applications are suffering. What would you do? You have no choice but to run those applications on that single link, which is of bad quality, which is experiencing, say, 10% packet loss. Now we have to use uh, forward error correction, where you have to, uh, so there's a package called UDP speeder. Uh, UDP speeder, uh, what it does is it uh, sends extra packets, for example, uh, one packet extra for every 10 packets sent, it's configurable. So if packets are getting lost in uh, transmission, uh, the more number of packets uh, cover those losses, and the 10% packet loss can be reduced to uh, less than 0.18%. Uh, so this package was not in OpenWRT, but it was available uh, outside of OpenWRT. So uh, I'm the maintainer of this package for Open WRT project. So the next thing comes, uh, next requirement was security. So a typical layer seven firewall. In addition to that, uh, uh, we also configured DNS firewall. So a lot of you must have heard and used uh, Pi-hole, which does DNS-based blocking for malware and advertising domains. So that applies in enterprise network as well. Uh, OpenWRT already has a package called AdBlock. It has various blacklists that you can use <coughs> and, <coughs> sorry, that we also use uh, for malware blocking. Uh, the DNS traffic is transparently intercepted at the gateway level uh, by a simple IP tables NAT rule. And uh, in order to use that reliably, we have to block DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS. Uh, there are also uh, IP blacklists available that we use to uh, block inbound and outbound traffic to malicious uh, malicious uh, IP addresses. And the traffic that is still uh, passes through firewalls, we need to uh, detect them for malicious activity and the intrusion detection system that uh, we use, we used on uh, OpenWRT is not. Uh, we are trying to move to Surikata because it can take advantage of multiple CPU cores available on the device, uh, but it's going to take some time. And the most important thing is signatures. So. Uh, we use emerging threats uh, signatures and uh, and signatures available from URL house. And for the web access control, uh, Squid is a very capable proxy server that uh, that is used for access control and caching the content. Uh, now the problem was, say for example, we have 400 locations and we have to apply policy everywhere and our devices are pretty small. Uh, that device, the, the device that I displayed earlier, it has just 20, 256 MB of RAM, so we could not uh, load local blacklist. So we came up with a policy server which runs on a central server on the internet, and the squid, uh, squid server at every location, it talks to that server, and uh, on the basis of the uh, policies configured, it replies back to the user whether the destination is allowed or not. So this is again a free software and it's available on, uh, its source code is available on uh, GitHub. Mm -hmm. Then web traffic malware filtering. For that, Clam AV and Squid Clam AV plugin for CICAP server. ICAP is Internet Content Adaptation Protocol where you can uh, adapt the uh, content flowing through the proxy server. So we take advantage of that to uh, scan for malicious uh, traffic. So malicious JavaScript or uh, malware, they can be uh, stored based on ClamAV antivirus signature. 
now uh, till now we could not see anything but visualization is very important because if we cannot see the problem we cannot solve it so we have to see the enemy so uh, dashboard for intrusion detection uh, system can be created and we created it using elastic logstash and kibana framework and the web traffic visualization using elk stack and the telemetry uh, resource utilization and other metric visualization is created using influxdb prometheus and grafana then the next problem was of uh, high availability uh, configuring higher availability for the device so just in case a device fails the other device should take uh, take up the responsibilities automatically so for that vrrp has to be used we used vrrp and the uh, and the software that uh, we use is called keep alive d and contract d also helps in uh, keeping uh, the contract states synchronized between both the devices so if this one goes down your connections are not broken because uh, the other device already has uh, the contract table populated uh, coming to wireless uh, we also try to solve wireless issues and uh, deploy a wireless mesh network at a 10 lakh square feet warehouse uh, but we failed at it miserably our our access points were uh, very capable but we tried to create a layer 2 mesh and the problem with layer 2 mesh is that you have a lot of broadcast traffic because a uh, whole mesh is in the same broadcast domain so lots of ARP request and then it it bogged the network and it used to come to a grinding halt so we gave up on mesh and connected all those access points uh, using cables now the way forward that we see here is to hire more people uh, package the custom scripts and tools that we have uh, created for managing uh, large scale networks uh, push those changes to upstream we have already contributed to a few packages uh, charcoal yeah charcoal next generation has to be prepared and the custom firmware because we do not use uh, vanilla open wrt we uh, take open wrt source code add some customizations and compile our own firmware for the hardware stack that we have uh, decided on so we have to focus more on security features and and uh, release that firmware so that it just works and anyone can download that firmware choose a hardware from the uh, from the market and use it to solve their problems the way we are solving it for our customers so that was all i would love to have some questions Yeah, uh, nice talk. Yeah, I think you covered a lot of breadth. Uh, what are the uh, solutions uh, these customers use in their data center? Like, I think you talked about the edge and then how these connect with. But on their data center side, uh, data centers. So uh, some of them have in-house data centers. Uh, one of the customer they have their uh, servers hosted uh, in say CFI's data center. So uh, so. You wanted to know about network stack or their application? Like, like you covered the hardware on the edge. Uh, you have these kind of hardware solutions, but uh, right. So, what do they use the same kind of uh, devices in their uh, data centers as well, and for routing and switching? Right. So, so uh, the customers that we uh, provide services to, they use our device at gateway level in their warehouse. They also have a firewall behind our box, right? uh but yes mm, i i didn't see any specific uh, or, 
or maybe higher uh, higher uh, configuration hardware there. That's all, okay. Thank you.